Over the past 10 years, the award has been presented to a wide range of laureates from all corners of Europe and re representing many disciplines. One thing connects them all, however, from Stuart Hall in 2008 to Borderland and Forensic Architecture today. They have had the courage to persevere and the determination to make a difference through their work. So on this anniversary, we published a book called Courageous Citizens, How Culture Contributes to Social Change in cooperation with Valise Publishers. On the one hand, there's the more traditional notions of courage that drive revolutions like overturning dictatorships or changing oppressive regimes. During and after these movements and events, and in this day and age, highly mediatized, of course, we remember the heroes and are often inspired by them. But what about the invisible individuals? Do we know them? Those who, who, with their courage, were as important as the heroes we know. Without their courage, history would have been and could have been different. The group presents its investigations of cases in various judicial, political, and legal forums. Forensic architecture's work has also appeared in cultural and artistic venues, redefining aesthetic practices as a way of intensifying the possibilities afforded by what is witnessed and who is witnessing. As such, the work courageously undertakes a counter-forensics where communities, survivors, and a broad base of civil society actors become part of a collective transformation, sparking a flame of hope in this post-truth age. So we cultural producers and practitioners find ourselves in a counterintuitive position. Coming from left-wing politics, weren't we supposed to fight against established truth, against old normative frameworks? Now we find ourselves having to insist on international law, on the merit of expertise, on facts, and even on the most problematic notion of all, on the truth. But there is hope, because new evidence starts to proliferate through digital means. But the same digital means that are used to spread propaganda, they are also the means in which information is made public and could be gathered, verified, composed, and become a source for a counter-narrative. This kind of evidence is produced not from the single perspective of one all-knowing expert, but from the multiple dozens, hundreds, thousands perspective of different people on the ground, often the very people that are exposed to violence in the first place. For nearly three decades, the Foundation has researched, revitalized, and nurtured a model of community building informed by diverse cultural imaginings and by the art of working critically with memory. The jury were moved by the fact that this is a region in northeast Poland that had a tangible heritage, a real heritage of real people that was destroyed by the war and became an intangible heritage. And thanks to Borderlands and their tireless work, their courageous work over many years, now the intangible once again has become tangible. Rights work is often perceived to be directed outwards from the West to the rest of the world, but this could be misleading. Human rights violations and vulnerabilities exist all around us, even within the perceived safety of Europe. On the beautiful seas on the Mediterranean that we saw before, that have become a lethal frontier to the streets of every European city where people gather to seek what is rightfully theirs. 
Today we are delighted to receive the support of the European Cultural Foundation, something that will be fully put at the service of new investigations. So thank you very much for this honor. We are courageous enough to believe that it is possible to build a connective tissue between different people who had different memories, different experiences, different prejudices, experiences, borders. But it is possible, thank you, Europe, that you are saying that this is European courage, citizenship. Thank you. Thank you.